What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, February 15th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, PG&E becomes California's most expensive power provider. Next up, do municipality politicians actually know where their electricity comes from? No. I'll go ahead and answer that right now. No. no. Next up, China's paradoxical role in the clean energy transition. We'll end the new segment with 70% of consumers unwilling to spend more on some energy sustainability. That's according to the latest Ernst & Young survey. I will then quickly talk about what's happened in the oil and gas finance markets. We did see uh, EIA U.S. crude oil stocks rise, a little product draw, which sort of led to slumping prices. Um, and then we will let you guys get out of here and finish up your Thursday. As always, I'm joined by Stuart Turley. I am Michael Tanner. Let's go ahead and kick us off. All right, man. Hey, let's go to our favorite uh, club, stupid uh, state here. Um, PG&E becomes California's most expensive power provider. Holy smokes, Batman. This one, uh, Mark Turney, head of Utility Reform Network, quote unquote, Michael, this sounds like something I would even say. Okay. We have an extremely bad problem on our hands. <laughs> 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 I'm not kidding. <laughs> He's a ratepayer advocacy group uh, member. PG&E customers are now paying more for power than anyone else in California. So they overspent $9.3 billion and they expect oh. to collect every penny of it. <laughs> Uh, yikes but you know who's and and you know who's gonna take it in the shorts as always they're right through the drive-thru they always get you in the drive-thru baby uh, uh we're talking really talking in enormous numbers that are gonna hurt so many families who aren't expecting another hundred dollars a month i think it's gonna be more than that you can't do a crayon no Man. and 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 no it's just it's fascinating yeah. to see what you know or planning, it doesn't hurt the corporation. Their stock's still no. going to go up. Their executives are still going to get compensated. It's, as you said, the, the consumer's going to hit it in the drive through Oh, it is. And he's got, uh, Tony's got another point down here. He goes, uh, our, the consumers have to live within their budgets uh, like everyone, like the rest of us do. Uh, one way to do that is to cap spending and make the utility count for it when it spends more than authorized. You know, you know, it it just makes sense. It just is a bad management. Bad management is bad numbers. Yeah, dude. You What's know what I'm saying here? Good numbers, good good management. Never mind. Okay, or good management, good numbers. Do municipality politicians actually know where electricity comes from? <laughs> I answered it in the open. No, no. Um, okay, let's go to the next article. No, uh, ISO data for yesterday's disclosed those I industrial wind turbines delivered uh, almost five megawatts over 24 hours or a misery, uh 4.2% of their rated capacity, even though they get first to the grid rights. This is nuts. The, everybody thinks that they're going to put in uh, 42 megawatts, but it's a, that's a nameplate. You're only going to get 4% of that, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the way you get to pay for that. Yep. Anyway. So when you sit back and take a look at this article, I thought it was pretty fun based on what's happening around the world. This is in Canada. When you're making rules, Michael, there's nobody that reads the bills anymore. And in uh, your local ones, there, there's now a groundswell of people wanting to stop um, uh, renewables from being in their backyard. It's the NIMBYs. So uh, the politicians adopting the natural gas phase out would be capable of understanding without those plants. Ontario would have experienced rolling blackouts that California is famous for. So people that legislators in California, in Canada and the U S are making decisions based on religion rather than facts. 
Well, it's a lot of what this 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 stuff is, and and what's unfortunate is that your local munis- municipality has a lot of control over you. It's some it's it's sometimes even more than the federal government because they're here now. Of course, it's Canada. We have to point out this is we're talking about Canada, who's gone a little overboard with some of this stuff. But I mean, it, again, it just goes to show you. Um, it, that I think it's a wonderful in the in the inclusion, Michael. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. The the time. Well, yeah, I did. I'm just kidding. Uh, the time that has come to push all elected politicians to stop the insane effort to decarbonize our economy and return to sanity, unless their objective is to drive us all into energy poverty and move us back to cave dwelling days. <laughs> My <It's>, kind of article. <laughs> great article. We appreciate it. What's next? Let's go to China's paradoxical role in the clean energy transition. This is actually pretty funny when you consider um, China is manufacturing most of the stuff out there. The nation installed 217 gigawatts of solar, prompting the climate watchdogs that China's greenhouse gas emissions could peak this year. I got some things I'm going to ask. They got 400 coal plants being built right now. How in the world is 217 gigawatts of installed solar going to counteract that? It's not. 1.21 gigawatts, baby. Yeah. If I had my Christopher Lloyd mask on right now, it'd be great. We're going to go back to the future and then try to find out how we can make money on this for the podcast, Michael. Mm -hmm. So, uh, China accounted for a staggering 96% of new coal power construction globally, adding 191 gigawatts of coal fire, coal fire power. That is just unbelievable. Yeah. Now, those coal fire plants are building the renewable crap that we're putting in on our yeah. network. Yeah, it's no, it really is. It, it really is crazy. I think it's it, it it and it just goes to show you that just because we are focused here at home on cutting emissions, it doesn't mean the world isn't. And if 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 we're going to restrict ourselves here without taking into account what they're doing across the pond, the big pond, we're, we're only it's only going to hurt ourselves. Here's this next article, Michael, plays right into today's th- uh, energy thread. 70% of the consumers are unwilling to spend more on energy subsidies, uh, this survey says. Mm-hmm. And the survey says um, Greg Guthridge, not Greg Gutfeld, uh, I've invited him to be on the podcast as well, too, but I know he's a little busy. Um, The survey highlights Gutridge added 70% of the outcomes of the energy transition depend on people changing their energy consumption behaviors and lifestyles, but consumer fatigue is setting in stalling confidence in stagnating process. People are not their NIMBYs. They're not going to do it in their backyard and then give up your cell phone. No. Give up your tri- traveling anywhere you want, anywhere you time. Nope. Uh, turn your heat up. Turn your heat down. Nope. Yeah. No. I mean, I I think what's funny is there's there's a lot of good stuff that was woven into this EY article. Um, but I I think you know people are not willing. They they, they want to spend less. People are used to spending less over time, and things right. getting better over time. Think about anything else in America. I mean, think about your phone. Think about your car. You've been able to spend less over time, and the efficiency or the product has improved. Except phones. People have accepted that phones were at a hundred bucks, and now everybody's getting expecting these thousand dollar phones. And Apple has done a great job increasing the price. Yeah, I mean, I, I, but on a, but on a massive scale, the price of things have gone down over time, and I mean, that's the free market at work. Obviously, we've got inflation right now, but, but no, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily. Again, I'm not driving an EV, 
So I'm not, you know, I'm and, and you're not going to see your, me. Your F-150 is anything but an EV. <laughs> yeah, I got to go get it. Hey, I'm in Texas now. I, I'm getting my car re-registered in Texas now this year. And you don't have to get an emissions test. That's wow. something in Colorado you have to do. Wow. But you have to That's get a vehicle amazing. inspection, so I don't know what's worse. Well, cough twice. <laughs> All right, before that we get funny. over, that was, that, yeah, because I don't know if it was good or bad. Uh, but before we go and talk finance, guys, we'll quickly pay the bills here. As always, the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your uh, energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website's up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to to the energy business hit the description below you can see all the links to the articles all the timestamps, and again um you can dive into whichever you prefer dashboard.energynewsbeat.com our data news combo product get it while you still can all right let's let's quickly talk oil prices Stu. i mean i mean as a step back the markets have, have, have taken a little bit of hit over the last two days i know i've been out you've been holding it down on the solo markets today though did see a little bit of a rise we're sitting at 90 uh we about percent uh on the day just finishing above five thousand um for the s p 500 nasdaq trading about 1.8 percentage points up to about seventeen thousand eight. Um, oh seven, we've seen Bitcoin up now at a fifty one thousand dollars. Again, that's off the black of some really bad CPI data that happened yesterday. So, um, Bitcoin uh, could be having another bull moment there. Uh, crude oil today actually took a little bit of a pounce. We're down to seventy six twenty six as we record this about five fifteen here on the 14th and mainly that's due to a rise in u.s um crude stocks we saw the eia come out and drop um their uh uh, uh commercial uh, res- uh stock tanks up 12 million barrels week over week um shark shocked the market just a little bit and we saw a uh, kind of a sell down over there. We also saw products draw down, um, which are refined products, um, and, and re- those refinery utilizations um, did drop week over week, which I think is is really holding everything down. Um, you know that Reuters poll. You know, if you reference the article on our website, you know Reuters was expecting a 2.6 million barrel build, so that 12 million barrel build, um, pretty much. Uh, uh, you know, increases that um, by about sixfold. We also saw the fact that, you know, gasoline and distillate inventories, as I mentioned, they're down to the lowest level since December of 2022. We did see um, um, a few companies um, drop earnings. We saw Oxy come out today um, and, and, uh, or, or excuse me, they'll be dropping them today as you listen to this. Excuse me. Um, we will see um, Cord and Antero. Um, we actually did see Antero drop their um, earnings report, which was nice. Um, I mean, gas is, is, is unfortunately getting hit, um, you know, kind of walking through what Antero said today there. 3.4 BCF a day, which is only a 6% increase year over year, um, you know, which is, which is, uh, you know, I, the, the second line item, hedging. Um, realized a pre-head natural gas equivalent price of about $3.50, which is actually really good. Net income of $95 million, adjusted net income. Again, that's a non-GAAP number, though, $71 million. Um, adjusted EBITDAX, again, non-GAAP, $322 million. Free cash flow of about $90 million before changes in working capital. Um, uh, you know, uh, got to tout their lateral lengths, guys. That's the other thing they, they do in their highlights. Um, I mean, they're only going to see about a 3%. Dec- I mean, what's kind of interesting is their guidance. I found this interesting. Their 2024 guidance net production is expected to average 3.3 to 3.4 BCF. Um, and uh, natural gas production is expected to decline 3% year over year. Yet they're spending $650 million on capital. What? You're expecting natural gas production to decline. But we're going to spend $650 million. I would like access to that budget, Stu. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm not going to increase downloads on the podcast, but I need a campaign of about $100,000 to go do that. We're going to experience a 3% decline in viewership. You're going to pay me $100,000. I mean, that's a great pitch, right? Yeah, but my visa doesn't go that high, so, you know. Hey, thank goodness. Well, it, and Taros does. That's what you can tap into the public markets. There's some stuff. There's some stuff. I just found that hilarious. We're expecting natural gas to, cluck, to, to decline, and we're going to spend $650 million. What's the IR guy on this one? Where's the IR guy of the week oh, on this one? IR guy of the week. 
it's got to be. I mean, it's it's awesome. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can find uh, find who that is here. Blah blah blah. I don't think they've got it listed in here. Um, point is, you know. Uh, it's pretty, oh, it's so pretty good. Pretty he doesn't want his name listed. Nah, he does, exactly. It's yeah. exactly what he wants. So it's 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 you know, Granholm. I'll, I'll take those budgets. What else you got, Stu? Before we let people go for the week. Oh, just everybody uh, stay tough, stay close, and hug your neighbors. Yeah, hug your neighbors. No kidding. So, guys, it's been crazy. <laughs> but with that, guys, we'll let you get out of here. Um, you'll be able to listen to it. Before I do that, what podcast do we have tomorrow? Um, we've got about three of them. We just re- uh, released Rhett Bennett today. And uh, we have, let me see what the production team has got going for us here. Oh, Snape has been crazy. We appreciate Uh-oh. everybody who's reached out. They're working on Doomberg. Um, yep. Let's see here. Doomberg is going to be going out. I have uh, Dan uh, with Combo Curve coming out. I have yes. J.P. Warren uh, with Keith Stelter coming out. Uh, Rhett Bennett just came out today. Nice. And then coming around the corner is Steve Reese, Andrew Dittmar with Inveris, uh, Kimberly Page from Inveris, and Doug Sandridge and Doug uh, David Blackman. We got us a full lineup. Uh, extremely full lineup. You can check all that out on the World's Greatest Podcast, um, the Energy Newsbeat, also available on our website, energynewsbeat.com. Um, we'll have a deal spot, a new deal spotlight out with John Farrell, CEO of Well Database. We talked to Diamondback uh, nice. and Endeavor, so lots of good stuff. Absolutely and, love. And they were at the booth. That's what I loved. They were well. Love us some Well Database. I mean, if if you're everyone should have a Well Database account in the country. I mean, first off, you can get a free account, but second off, it's got ex- it's got all of the wow. information in a really digestible subscription um, that you can take it. So we highly recommend checking out Well Database. We love them. And John, we love everybody over there. Um, but with that, guys, we'll let you get out of here. Uh, have a great weekend. You can see a bunch of podcasts tomorrow, Saturday. You'll get the weekly recap, and then we'll see you guys back bright and early Monday morning. With that, guys, we'll see you next week.